Ocean acidification is probably the most important issue on the planet today, because it affects all life on Earth. Millions of coral polyps, striving for sunlight for thousands of years, build reefs, the largest living things on Earth. Reefs cover less than 1% of the sea floor, but are home to 25% of the species, and are the basis for 60% of the world's fisheries. Charlie is in Papua New Guinea, studying the effects of ocean acidification on corals. Coral is a mixture of plant and animal. They are among the most ancient of all ecosystems that we find, and that's why it's so successful. At least a quarter, perhaps a half, of all the species of the oceans are in coral reefs. That makes them by far, by a long, long way, the most diverse habitats in the oceans. When reefs evolved, 500 million years ago, they created structures, providing habitats and food for other organisms, and life exploded in diversity. Humans tend to think a great deal about temperature as atmospheric temperature, or climate change as, an, as a terrestrial problem, but primarily it is not. What the oceans do the terrestrial world will follow. We are changing the environment very, very quickly. And what we're doing is converting hundreds of millions of years of accumulation of fossil fuel, burning them in such a way that they are being turned into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is ultimately absorbed by the oceans as an acid. When it is absorbed by the ocean, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere reacts with water molecules to form a dilute acid, and this acid reacts with carbonate molecules, turning them into bicarb. And that destroys the carbonates in the ocean surface, and that changes the capacity of corals to build skeletons. Now the downside of that is it's changing the chemical conditions under which life has evolved. Things like carbonate ions, which are very important for building coral skeletons, are slowly dissipating as the oceans become more acidic. My main area of research now is to try to understand the effects of ocean acidification on coral reefs. It's a huge issue. We're blowing all this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that enters into the ocean and changes the seawater chemistry. A few years ago, hardly anyone knew about it. By, by changing the water chemistry, you're basically changing whatever is happening in the ocean from the bottom up, from all the way down the food chain to the higher organisms. A few years back, I found some vents. It's a volcanic area where carbon dioxide is bubbling out of the seafloor. The bubble sites are absolutely unique worldwide. We can use those bubble sites to investigate how elevated concentrations of carbon dioxide change the whole ecosystem structure. The intensity of bubbles is different in different places. So we can basically use it as a bit of a time machine to see what's going to happen if carbon dioxide concentrations continue to rise as we know today in a 50 or 100 years time. Our data show very clearly that ocean acidification in combination with global warming is already affecting the corals as we know it. The oceans have now taken up about a third of all the carbon dioxide humans have ever produced. And like the build-up of CO2 in the atmosphere, the acidification of the world's ocean is starting to approach states that haven't been seen for many millions of years. There's huge parts of the world where you can swim over a coral reef and you just see individual corals here and there. It really is decimated. At least 30% of all the coral of this planet is gone. If we continue business as usual, the only hope for a coral reef is that humans will destroy their own capacity to make carbon dioxide. There is a real chance that ocean acidification, if it continues on the track that it is now, that coral-dominated reef systems like the Great Barrier Reef 
will soon disappear. And of course, if the reef disappears, then the habitat for over a million species will also disappear as well. At a global scale, losing coral reefs has implications for over 500 million people who depend on coral reefs each day for their food and income. Coral reefs are saying, we're in trouble. And when coral reefs are in trouble, then the oceans are in trouble. There are also alarming signs that plankton, that is responsible for 50% of the oxygen we breathe, and for the vast food chains in our polar oceans, are beginning to struggle to make their delicate calcium carbonate skeletons, as the carbonate iron concentrations of these oceans decrease. We have documented that plankton levels are declining on a global scale in eight out of 10 large ocean ecosystems. Our study has found that phytoplankton levels have diminished by up to 40% over the last 50 years, so since 1950. Phytoplankton is important because it's the base of everything in the ocean, and the ocean is the base for everything on the planet. Every second breath we take comes from the ocean. Half the biomass uh, that's produced through the photosynthesis is produced in the ocean. If we start losing the plankton of the Southern Oceans, we start losing the capacity of the Southern Oceans to support just about all their marine life. 21% of the air in our atmosphere is oxygen, which animals need to survive. At least half of our oxygen comes from phytoplankton in the ocean, the lungs of the earth. The only thing we can do which will control ocean acidification is to stop burning fossil fuel. The mass extinctions and the last 500 million years have concentrated muck and other dead plants and animals into carbon-rich fuels, fuels like oil, coal, and gas. This carbon dioxide release is changing ocean and atmospheric chemistry and altering our climate. Most of the previous mass extinction events, of which there were five, can be directly attributable to ocean acidification events. Ocean acidification will cause the oceans to become hostile to the growth of any organism that needs to build a skeleton of any sort. Well, that's most things in the ocean. If we continue warming the oceans at this rate, we're going to soon exceed the temperatures that corals that build coral reefs are able to tolerate. We can turn this around. We can. We do have the ability. If we all get together, it's like the start of a war, a world war. Our children can have good lives. A hundred years from now, this can be a nice blue planet if we act wisely and we act now.